All right, all right. What do you get when a psychoanalyst, too many therapy sessions, and some childhood trauma walk into a bar? Typically, you get a week of my adolescence, but this time, it's actually My Annihilation by Fuminori Nakamura. This book's description promises a tale that delves relentlessly into the darkest corners of human consciousness and interrogates the unspeakable thoughts all humans share that be monstrous when brought to life, revealing with disturbing honesty the psychological motives of a killer. The opening page of the novel offers a cryptic message to the reader. Turn this page and you may give up your entire life. Enter a secluded cabin. A manuscript lays open on a desk, offering its pages to the sole inhabitant, a man who is switching places with another person, switching places with a Ryodai Kozuka. Tempted by the journal before him, the man in the cabin, our nameless narrator, doesn't heed the printed warning and begins reading. The opening chapters of my annihilation seesaw back and forth between moments of reflection by our mysterious narrator and the pages of the journal. The writer, a struggling youth documenting his troubled experiences and emotions. As you read, a sense of unease settles over the story. Certainly, the narrator and journal are connected in some fashion, but the link between the two remains ambiguous and taunting. In chapters 3 and 4, the story takes a turn into a dedicated analysis of Tsutomu Miyazaki, or sometimes better known as the Otaku Killer. The Otaku Killer is infamous in Japan for his horrific killings of four girls in the 1980s. When he was arrested and his apartment raided, police found a plethora of anime and manga among his myriad of obsessive collections. The media narrative that followed was that the otaku culture had played a role in his violence, hence the moniker. These two chapters are some of the book's best works. They were poignant enough, I'm sure partially due to the graphic content, watching a car wreck mentality, that I burned through them. Here's a segment of the otaku killer's trial testimony that is transplanted into the book. She started screaming. Realizing I was betrayed, I became frightened and begged myself not to attack her, getting more and more scared until things went out of control. I can't remember the rest. Ten or so of these guys, the size of grown-ups, but with faces like rats, surrounded me. Creatures with the faces of rats. Sometimes he called them rat men. As soon as the girl cried out, the rat men surrounded Miyazaki. Only in reflection do I catch myself pondering what their purpose was in the overall narrative. The psychological dilemma plaguing Miyazaki, as interpreted by the author, seems mostly devoid from the main themes of the novel. What is the self, and can it be rewritten? If it can be, do we truly have a self? Undeniably, the main cast are burdened with psychological issues of their own, and the story delves into esoteric psychological concepts but the connection between the Utaku killer and the novel felt strained. Nakamura's book sports an impressive bibliography for your standard fiction fare, and the sections dedicated to the Utaku killer felt like they were taken from a separate novel entirely. Even their presentation feels forced within the chapters of My Annihilation. Nakamura comments on the chapters dedicated to Miyazaki. For the sections on Tsutomo Miyazaki, I mainly use reference materials to access the facts of the case, but the analysis of his character is my own. I have to wonder if Miyazaki's inclusion was inspired more by Nakamura's personal passion rather than him inserting the perfect puzzle piece to finish the jigsaw. Back at the cabin, our narrator finishes the journal and discovers secrets hidden in the cabin. They leave and are handed a note. First off, I owe you a sincere apology. If you're reading this, a man is taking you away. Instead of Ryodai Kozuka, those guys are probably convinced that's who you are. They think you're delusional for insisting that you're not Kozuka, when, at least to them, you are. The reader, 
I'm talking about you and me in this context, certainly have sensed something amiss with the setup by this point. But the novel is able to provide an engaging twist that left me double-taking the pages I had just read. Better yet, the twist and ensuing plot provides a unique vision I hadn't seen before. Though, I'm willing to accept this might be because of me not reading these types of novels frequently. Unfortunately, this initial payoff was soured as the plot devolves into an utterly convoluted revenge archetype and a second big twist is shoehorned into the concluding chapter. While I've highlighted a few negative aspects, I, I wanted on the record that I finished this novel before I had any aspirations for writing book reviews. The dark world presented by Nakamura pulled me through the pages. The book comes in at 256 pages, but it felt like a lot less as I maddeningly turned the pages on my Kindle app. The dark corners of the human consciousness were explored, and I was fully engaged in the expedition. By the end of the trip, though, I couldn't help feeling disappointed in a way. I think the book's second half buckled under the weight of too many ideas with too little space to explore them. In a similar vein to ACG's method of reviewing, I want to establish a rating system that doesn't fall into a nonsensical pit of numbers and algorithms. So this is my test case of read now, read if you're bored or have a particular interest in this genre, put this on your plan to read list, or Fahrenheit 451. Firstly, before taking my subjective score into consideration, a potential reader should be aware that this book contains extremely graphic content. The discussion about the otaku killer, sexual violence, physical violence, manipulative practices, etc. begin to proliferate the pages shortly after delving into the first chapter. For me, this book falls squarely into the read if you're bored category, or have a particular interest in the genre. While there are glimpses of intriguing psychoanalytical and narrative material, they are lost under the pressure of a slim novel trying to lift outside of its weight class. The section about the otaku killer was engaging, but I felt it didn't fit so snugly into the narrative that it justified its length and occasional commentary from the characters. The pervading air of mystery in the first half of the story and the initial twists and turns were executed well, but the latter sections of the story buckled under a crowded revenge plot and a needlessly slash heartily telegraphed big reveal haphazardly thrown in at the end. Alright, well that's my review for My Annihilation. I hope you enjoyed and thanks for watching.